RPS and Rainbow, two young lovers, struggle to gain the selfish desire of it. Orpheus is the son of one of the muses, a Trojan prince, and the finest music musician around. Orpheus' music was so inspirational and powerful that he was able to make living and non living things pursue him. From his music, Orpheus made during his everything that happened to them started to begin. It was a mysterious evening. Orpheus, on his bed, dreamed about Eurydice, his one and only love. and determination to protect your beloved Eurydice uh, against the harm Maybe of the evil. Father, you are apparently right. All I have to do right now is to protect her. That's great, my uh, son. I think this is the right time to tell you that I love Eurydice very much. And I wish to marry her as soon as possible. Would that be okay to you? Of course, my son. My son, I know her very well. She's a wonderful woman and I'm very sure that she's the perfect bird for you. My son, follow your heart and marry Thank you, Father. I promise to take care of my son the same way as you treat me and my mother. was their happier couple.
but Aristeus, a hunter, is Pedirides walking and pursued her. Puny musician, why pick flowers when you are lovelier than any flowers could ever be? Leave me alone, Aristeus. I am wed to Arpius, and I only belong to him. I am a hunter. I can provide for you. Mute sustains a person more than a music. I said leave me alone! And with that, Aristeus began chasing Eurydice through the words. He was a hunter and was very swift. But eventually, Eurydice was a pleto, get me, away from him. Or else your beloved husband will be gripped. I beg for your help. Oh, dear Orpheus, this is a very sad news for you. Your this is gone to the other world. Father, no! Not my beloved Eurydice. I won't allow it. I must get her back, I'm Father. I'm afraid there's nothing can be done, my son. The dead cannot return to the land of the living. I'm I sorry. will not accept it. I am going to her. Orpheus, but no. it was too late. Nothing would keep Orpheus Sorry, from his Eurydice. I must get my Eurydice back. With the lyre in hand, he traveled down to the, the underworld and, the and reached rock. the rivers, which separated the land of the living see from my the land of the dead. Take me to her. There Sharon. he met Charon, a third man to the death. take your last breath, you won't be riding in my boat. Oh, all right. Come aboard, I'll take you across. Orpheus was desperate. He had to get to Eurydice. Suddenly, he had an idea. So Charon rode Orpheus across the river Styx to the land of the death. When they reached the other side, they were greeted by Cerberus, the three-headed dog. It's Cerberus. Hey, this three-headed dog, I rode you across, but he'll never let you in. He's fierce. I tell you. Again, Orpheus took his lyre and began to play. Before the king, the dog was laying at Orpheus' feet getting a bell rush. This! This! Something bad happened. There now, good boy. Ah, uh, boys. Anyway, see ya. I smell a living man here in the underworld. Who dares to enter? This eye. Orpheus, and I've come here to take your this home with me. Home? Ha! She is home. This is now her home. She Orpheus. was taken too soon. I must have her back. She'll come to you eventually. <laughs> but not now. Persephone knew that Orpheus was going through. She had to live half the year in the underground. For the other half, she could stay in the land of the living with her mother, Demeter. Persephone, no. can't you help on Orpheus' behalf? And that's that. Once again, Orpheus used the only weapon he'd ever had. He played a tune on his lyre that he was the most beautiful ever yes. imagined. Stop. It even reduced him, the anymore. god of the underworld, so to tears. And that's no easy task. Since you moved me to tears, and no one has ever done that, you can have your Yuri Bravo, Orpheus. Oh, thank you, Hades. Oh, please. Now go, and remember, do not look back. Simple enough. Okay, bring her to me. Vision. I may be a softy, but I am still king of the dead. Eurydice will follow you back to the land of the living. But, do not look at her until you are both on the other side. If you do, she will be mine forever. So Orpheus and Eurydice began the long journey back to the land of the living, with Eurydice walking behind Orpheus. They made it past Cerberus, 
who was joining in the scene, still wearing chirping smile from our first place. They met Charon at the river's place. A still no response from the Silence was the only answer or was gone.